you'd read the script a year before you did the film. Right, right. Um, Ridley Scott wasn't planning to direct it then. You were pushing, you were pushing. Finally, he agreed to meet with you, and you tried to convince him to give, hit, to give you the other role. Mm. Tell me about lunch with Ridley. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, he at first was just producing it, and there were actually a few sets of Thelma's and Louise before it ended up being Susan and I, uh, because he went through a few different directors and then decided, I'm just going to direct this myself. And so I'd been following this for a year, and, and he said, yes, sure, sure, you can come in. And, uh, uh, and I'd met with my acting coach, and we had decided that I uh, should play Louise, that this was be a fantastic turning point, that I'd play the more mature part and whatever. And so I, I wanted this so bad, and I'm just pitching my heart out, and I brought all my notes and everything about why I absolutely have to be Louise. And uh, he finally says, so, in other words, you wouldn't play Thelma. And uh, <laughs> there was only a very <laughs> slight pause, actually, before I said, you know what's so weird is I've been listening to myself as I've been talking, and I'm not convinced anymore. Actually, I think <laughs> I should play Thelma. Was this the truth, or did you just flip well, on the no, I just No, I just completely made it. And then I just made shit up about why I should be Thelma. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I signed did. a contract that I would play either part. Wow. I don't know that that's ever happened before. Uh, so was Susan Sarandon already cast? No, no. Interesting. Did no. they do screen tests with both of you? Or? No, I mean, what, uh, well, so, yeah. so they, uh, uh, it was because I got offered another movie, and they had, but they weren't sure which part to cast me in. They said, it depends who the other person is. So then they finally said, all right, we'll offer you if you'll, if you'll agree to play either part. And then they said, Susan's going to play Louise. I said, oh, that's great. I'm, that's fine. I'm sure I could have played it, but that's fine. And then, uh, and then I meet her. On, uh, the first time I meet her, it was just Ridley and she and I were going to get together and go through the script. And pretty much the second I met her, I was like, what was I, what was I thinking? How could I possibly play Louise? She is so, um, you know, she's just fabulous. So, fabulous. so, so how do you... Um, work with somebody like Susan Sarandon when it's such an intimate combination of two people. Do you, do you hang out together beforehand? Do you do that during the shooting? Well, yeah, we hung out all the time together during the shooting because um, it was mostly just us. Yeah. And uh, um, a lot of times you can't go all the way back to your trailer because mm -hmm. you're out in the middle of the desert or something. So we're just hanging around in the car talking. I think just, just the other day, Ridley was telling, I happened to see Ridley, and he was talking to somebody about um, that maybe somebody from the studio said, are you sure you don't want to shoot a different ending? And Ridley said, no. Really? Said, all right, all right. That's fine. Oh. That yeah. story is out there, that there are other right, endings right. that... No, no, I mean, no, we were always... Gonna, there was never any ending where we don't drive off the cliff. There were different editing of it, mm. like one where... We start to go off the cliff, and then it cuts to scenes of us still alive. I mean, back, you know, back when we were alive, to kind of take the edge off. It was such an unusual film for him to direct, mm -hmm. because you really associate him with um, larger-than-life films. Yes. You certainly don't think of him as what once would have been called a woman's director. Right. And he's a very, you know, he comes from the north of England, right. working-class background, very much, you know, what would have been called a man's man. Right. Uh, did he, was he nervous at all? Did you have conversations with him D about that? Ridley's not nervous about no. stuff. No, no, no. <laughs> Ridley's very, uh, very confident, very creative, and uh, loves movies, lo and loved this script. Um, but I think it was just partly that he didn't Im immediately want to do it himself. It was a low-budget movie. He's used to doing great, you know, great big things. Um, it was something like an eighteen million dollar budget, um, and and he was going to have someone else do it. But uh, but it's so great that he did decide to do it because uh, he gave it the epic sweep that it has. Which uh, um, it, I think it could have seemed like a much smaller movie, but you know, with his uh, yeah, cinematic abilities and incredible. Uh, attention to the characters. He's fantastic with oh. characters and, and working with actors. Uh, so In what way? Um, 
really knows what he wants, uh, and at the same time, he's incredibly collaborative and freewheeling. The, the, the thing I noticed, have learned the most about directors is when they're very confident in themselves, they're open to creativity from other people. If they're scared or nervous, then they shut off. And nobody's ideas are, don't tell me, tell me your ideas, just do it the way I want you to do it. And it's not the best with somebody like Sidney Pollack. He knows exactly what he's doing, but you know, the guy with the, delivering the hot dog says, can I say it this way? And he goes, yeah. yeah, sure, whatever. So anyway. <laughs>